Eagles grace the Novacare Complex for a 10-10-10 practice today. For those unaware, this consists of a rotation of 10 offensive plays, 10 defensive plays, and then 10 minutes of special teams drills. With that in mind, it's difficult to take away too much in terms of quarterback play and that kind of thing, since balls are often tossed up for the defense to make plays on purpose. But with that caution in mind, here's all you need to know from another day of Eagles training camp. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like, hit that subscribe button and drop your opinions down below in the comments on everything discussed today. And also let me know what you want to see more of in this channel. The training camp grind is real, we're trying to bring you the very best of action from every single day down at the Novacare, but plenty more along with that as well. So we hope you're along for the journey, thank you so much for being a part of it, let's get to the takeaways. Only right that we start off with an attendance report and it was business as usual for the Eagles today with no new surprises on the injury list which is always good news. Craven LeBlanc and Paul Worley weren't practicing as expected while Jalen Mills remains on the physically unable to perform list. Jason Kelsey was in attendance but donning a hat so it's likely that he got the day off for some rest and Jason Peters was another in that same category. Elliot Shawparks noted that there are currently 10 players not taking part in team drills but that list has remained largely the same for quite some time now with the players in question all working their way back from injury. Because of the lighter nature of the practice and the absences noted other players received some first team rep and among them was first round selection Andre Dillard who stepped up at left tackle for Jason Peters but interestingly it was Stefan Wisniewski who took left guard reps while Isaac Sermalo shifted inside and took centre reps. This is a little surprising given that it seemed as though Wisniewski was being groomed as the backup centre. However, that role was of course being contested for last year by Isaac Sayamalo, so perhaps the Eagles are just seeing what they have in both players in terms of versatility. Wisniewski should still be the backup centre, but it has to be noted that the transition inside for him so far hasn't exactly been smooth, so taking stock of what other people can do at the position, especially someone as versatile as Sayamalo, isn't exactly a bad idea. There are a couple of underdogs who have been recently receiving notable special teams reps, with one of those being tight end Josh Perth. Brandon Lee Galton of Bleeding Green Nation cited that keeping four tight ends on the roster may be more likely due to the increased focus on 12 personnel, but I'd go one step further and say the fact Richard Rogers is returning to me hints that there should also be an increase in 13 personnel next season, bringing back the days of 2017 where the Eagles can field two receiving tight ends without compensating the extra bulk up front, and if that is the case, they do want to use three tight ends regularly, then of course they want to bring a fourth onto the the roster. And let's not forget, there was a time where Trey Burton was an undrafted free agent and sat behind James Casey, Brent Selleck and Zach Ertz. So it's an interesting format, one that has been entrenched with this team for quite some time. Don't be surprised if they keep four tight ends. Got our first real Sharif Miller update courtesy of Elliot Shaw Parks who saw the rookie defensive end working with the third team earlier today. Miller currently sixth around sixth or seventh on the depth chart which kind of makes sense. Behind Graham, Barnett, Curry, Sweat and arguably Osman who has slightly more experience at the NFL level, there's plenty of growing room in Miller's game. I mentioned many times on this channel and on our website phillysportsnetwork.com the Penn State product needs to add some pass rushing moves to his arsenal as soon as possible and maybe that's why he's a little bit lower on the depth chart his first real training camp as an NFL player. We also finally got to see some designated red zone action in today's 10-10-10 practice and it carried out much of what we expected. Two tight end formations, big wide receivers and saucy completions. Even Nate Sudfeld was putting balls just where the bigger tight ends can get it and according to John Barchard there was a formation that had Zach Ertz in the slot and Dallas Goddard working out of the backfield so that in itself is going to get a few people flustered and of course JJ Sega whiteside was exposed to some first team action as well inside the red zone. That means a lot for his development. If we're going to see him as a prominent red zone receiver, the fact he's already working with the first team speaks volumes about his progression. Also, shout out to the human cone army code Sega, if you know you know, for staying after practice along with Nate Jerry to put in some extra work. You can only be commended for that kind of hustle and I'm sure it's going to pay off in the long run. And finally, 
is there a new role for Rasul? One of the bigger training camp standouts so far has been Rasul Douglas, and today was no different, with the West Virginia Bullhawk batting away a Nate Sudfeld pass that landed safely in the paws of Trey Sullivan. But we also saw him take nickel reps with the third team today, which is something entirely new. We haven't seen Douglas, who's one of the taller cornerbacks on the team, working inside yet, nor have we seen him work at safety, but with the injuries to Crave on the Blong, it's not hard to see why they've decided to try and move him around. Now, I don't think a move inside would be permanent for Douglas, but getting some experience under his belt doesn't hurt, as Schwartz alluded to yesterday, stating this. More importantly, citing that he won't take any safety reps in training camp, and he only did last year because it was an emergency situation. But moving inside at nickel, eh, Schwartz seems open to the idea, so maybe this is an idea, maybe not. So maybe, just maybe, in a dream scenario, this is a way of getting Douglas on the field. There is every chance now in some hypothetical future. Darby, Douglas and Jones with Avante Maddox at safety. That's how you get all of your top guys on the field. And I'm a little bit flustered thinking about it. We've already gone through different situations before on this channel. The cornerback battle is shaping up to be a monumental one. You don't want to take your eyes off it. So make sure that you stick around here at Philly Sports Network for your daily dose of Eagles training camp updates. Thank you so much for making this a part of your daily routine. I've loved making it a part of mine you can follow me on twitter at liam jenkins psn again guys don't forget to drop your comments down below about your takeaways and what you want to see i'll see you tomorrow